Uh, good afternoon, everybody, at least everyone that stayed. Thank you for, for sticking around. Um, today, well, first of all, I want to thank uh, 500 Startups for having me here today. Uh, I've been doing this growth thing for a while, and it's a lot of people uh, that I look up to that have uh, done this conference and spoke at this conference. <laughs> uh, and so it's just, it's just great to be here today in front of you guys. Uh, my name is Everett Taylor. Um, I currently lead marketing over at Skirt. Uh, today I want to talk about fueling growth through emotional intelligence. Um, that really should say fueling growth through emotional intelligence and fueling retention as well. Um, so to give you a little bit, can you guys hear me? All right. Uh, so to give you a little bit of my background, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I started my first company when I was 19 years old when I couldn't find a job. And so that was pretty much my only option at the time. Um, I've started four different companies since then. Uh, you can see down at the bottom, I'll just go and talk about it now. Uh, I recently launched the uh, social media growth hacking service called Growth Pup. Uh, I have about 12 years of marketing experience. I uh, started when I was 14 years old doing traditional marketing for a company called Eastern National, uh, then went to United Way, and then kind of got into the tech space. Um, I worked with companies like Microsoft, leading growth for new products at Microsoft, uh, Qualaroo, Growth Hackers, you saw Sean Ellis speaking earlier, um, and also CMO of Sticker Mule. And now I am uh, at Skirt, and if you guys aren't familiar with Skirt, I wouldn't be surprised because we aren't in the Bay Area yet. Uh, Skirt is a on-demand uh, car company, mobility company, where we deliver cars on demand. So think about us kind of disrupting the rental car industry. Uh, we deliver a car to you at the tap of a button, and then we pick it up once you're done that you can drive around as much as you want, hopefully coming to uh, the Bay Area very soon. Data. So this is how I feel about data. And you know, I've watched a lot of growth and marketing talks before. Uh, a lot of it's about data. I love data. It's the infrastructure of what I do as a growth marketer. Uh, we all know the importance of data. You guys have been sitting here since this morning. And I'm pretty sure you guys have been beaten over the head about how important data is, from knowing what your customer acquisition cost is to what channels are working. And so I kind of want to switch gears a little bit and talk about something else today instead of just data. So what I want to talk about today is emotions. And I'm not talking about the emotions that your girlfriend complained about that you didn't have you know, two years ago in your relationship. I'm talking about a different kind of emotion. I'm not talking about this kind of emotion either or any lyrics from this guy at all. Uh, I'm talking about emotional intelligence. Uh, emotional intelligence by Google is the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions, and to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. Now, I want you guys to focus and remember that empathetic part, because I'm going to come back to that in the end. It's very, very important to remember. Now, um, one of the privileges of uh, you know, being at this point in my career, I get a lot of time to be able to mentor people. And a lot of people ask me questions about, you know, how do I grow my company? Um, how do I get to the stage that you're at? How do I become a better marketer? And there's three things that I always tell them. Number one is to be data driven. Like we said before, that's something that we all know. Um, number two is to be a voracious learner. Um, that means in your testing, your multivariate testing, that means in your skill set. Um, su success is very scary. Um, success is, can be the scariest thing that can happen to you at a startup. And I'm not even talking about large scale success. I'm talking about success even at a smaller level of seeing like you know one channel working really, really, really well. The problem with success is, is that it gets you comfortable. And to be successful as a marketer and be successful growing a product, you have to be a voracious learner that wants to continuously improve your skill set and also continuously test the things that you're doing. And the last thing, and what we're talking about today, is being highly, highly emotional intelligent. Um, and so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So making a hit record is very equivalent to 
to growing a successful product. And um, so how, you, how many of you guys have heard of Pharrell? So imagine Pharrell producing a track, and then you got Drake spinning hot fire, and then Adele on the hook. Like these are some of the most successful people. And what data has shown us from album sales and the things that they've been able to do, technically, if you put these three together, something good should happen. But that's not always the case. Um, a lot of times I see people, especially, you know, I feel bad sometimes talking at things like this because, you know, you, you talk about a certain marketing tactic and someone thinks, hey, I can apply that same marketing tactic to my company. Um, or you see the data and you think that is the complete whole story and that's not the case. Um, you have to have a better feel for your audience, your target audience, um, when building products uh, for, your, for your audience. Um, also, I like to give the example of dating. Um, so I live in Los Angeles, and I see guys driving like fancy cars um, with too strong cologne, uh, fancy clothes, and they think having like a nice car, nice clothes, all these different things equate to getting the women of their dreams. And that's not necessarily the case. And the same goes with building a product. So you have to have a feel for people and be emotionally intelligent to grow a successful product. So Skirt, uh, and if you guys haven't downloaded Skirt, I know it's not in the Bay, you should probably do that. Um, the number one lesson I've learned, I've learned a lot of lessons at Skirt, but the number one lesson that I've learned is empathy for customers equals accelerated growth. It helps you build better products, better user experiences, and better marketing strategies. Being able to put yourself in the shoes of your customers and your users, and the team, the entire team, Sean Ellis was speaking about this earlier, and I used to work with him, so I heard it plenty of times, uh, is that growth is a team-wide effort. Um, everybody from customer so support to product, engineering, and marketing all have to be highly emotional, emotionally intelligent and have empathy towards customers. So this brings me into my next point. Faceless numbers equal actual people. Um, I've been in a lot of startups, and sometimes you can get so inundated with data that you start to forget that these are actual people whose lives you're affecting. For instance, at Skirt, if we're late to, you know, late to a customer, uh, how, how does that affect them? If your product isn't working, how does that affect them? How does that affect the lives of everyday people? Um, having that empathy towards those customers uh, allows you to dive a little bit deeper than what the data may suggest. Um, EQ allows you a deeper understanding of the actual needs and behaviors of your customers, which is essential to serving them. Um, being able to have a deeper understanding of your customers, understanding their wants and needs, understanding what resonates with them is essential. Uh, knowing your customers beyond data helps you deliver personal and considerate experiences that have a direct effect on retention and word of mouth. Uh, so we talk a lot about growth, but retention is one of the most important things to keep in mind. Um, if you are filling up a leaky bucket, you're gonna see your startup or your company fail very, very, very fast. And providing those supreme customer experiences, having empathy towards your customers and users go a long way to the ultimate thing that you want, which is word of mouth. You can be an SEO expert, you can be a digital ads wizard, you could have all the PR contacts that you want, but if you don't have word of mouth, which is the ultimate marketing lever, it does not matter. And so if you do not have a relationship with your customers and users, if you're not talking to them, if you don't have a feel for the wants and needs that they have, you're in trouble. So this brings me to uh, this, what, which I like to call MVC, uh, most valuable customers. That's Kevin Durant. He just dropped like 40 last night uh, <laughs> on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, so the real MVC or most valuable customer is something that you want to keep in mind. These are the people that are going to be the easiest to adopt your products. These are going to be the people that are going to be evangelists for your product. 
building your MVC profile. Data plus the ability to know your customer equals solving the desired outcome from your product and service. Uh, when you're building your marketing strategies and when you're thinking about how to acquire customers, in the back of your mind, you should always be thinking, what is the desired outcome of your customer? For Skirt, oh, sorry. For Skirt, it's getting a car on time, having a seamless experience on the app, um, being able to do and accomplish the things that you need to do with mobility. And every time that you build products, every time you guys test, every time you build marketing strategies, you should be thinking about what is the desired outcome of my most valuable customers or my most valuable users. Figuring out your MVC will help you surface appropriate marketing channels, campaigns, and tactics to reach your customer. I can't stress this enough. If you don't know your customer, you're gonna have a hard time marketing to them. I see a lot of people wasting marketing budget, marketing to the wrong types of customers, marketing to the people that aren't gonna be evangelists for your product. You need to be able to find your niches and your customer base that are gonna be the most valuable when you're starting off. Understanding your MVC goes beyond data, talking and interacting with customers, and knowing your customers on a deeper level to craft channel appropriate messages that will grab their attention and compel action. So not only in your, mess, in, your, in your marketing messaging do you need to be able to capture their attention, but you also have to be able to compel action. Now, me personally, unlike Karen, I've never got 50 million YouTube views, but I have been able to craft marketing strategies that have compelled action because I know my customers on a deeper level than just what the data may say. Conversion rate optimization through EQ. 95% of all purchasing decisions, online and offline, are based on emotional impulses. We're not robots, people. Uh, the understanding of consumer psychology, Nir knows this very well, uh, and how they interact with your website or app requires strong EQ. Uh, being able to understand what emotions that you can pull out of people, what emotions get people to buy your product, interact with your ads, interact with your app and website is extremely important. EQ provides inspiration for the testing required for conversion rate optimization and any multivariate testing. Um, so I'm a big tester. I always wanna test, I'm never satisfied. It comes with that voracious learning. And one of the things that I always do is trust my gut instinct and have that backed up by data. Um, I take it very personally for me to know my customers, to interact with my customers. Um, when they're not having an enjoyable experience, it hurts me just as much as it may hurt them. Um, and being able to have that empathy will allow you to create the right marketing for them. Social awareness. This is a big one. So how many of you guys seen this Bob Marley filter that Snapchat did with the blackface? It's terrible. It's like Halloween all over. Um, so uh, Snapchat made this on 420, uh, which is like the nationally recognized day for smoking marijuana. Uh, Bob Marley, they made the Snapchat filter for him. And a lot of people were upset about this. Um, and obviously, I don't know Snapchat's data, but I saw a lot of people get upset, a lot of people saying that they were going to leave Snapchat for this. Now, if Snapchat loses a few thousand out of their 200 million, active users, it's not gonna really hurt Snapchat at all. But if you're an early stage product, if you're a startup, losing a large amount of users could be the death of your company. Making missteps from a public relations standpoint, making missteps using the wrong marketing strategies, using the wrong influencers uh, for your product. For instance, Kim K Kardashian is really popular, but if you put Kim Kardashian on the wrong product, that may turn off a lot of your users. So understanding your users and being socially aware is extremely important. And to do this, you must build diverse teams. And I know some of you guys are probably tired of hearing, hearing about diversity. I don't really care. Diversity is really, really important. And the reason I say this is not about race, it's not about gender, it's not about age or sexual orientation. At the end of the day, it's about people who come from different backgrounds, that have had different experiences than you, that look at things differently and understand, understand things differently than you do. 
And this prevents these things from happening. If Evan Spiegel had me standing by him, I'd be like, nah, son, you can't do that, okay? It's important to build diverse teams. Leading your growth team, two things. I'm a little light-skinned there, but that's me. Uh, <laughs> self-awareness plus relationship management. Number one, self-awareness. Um, how many of you guys out here have your own startup? Okay. Now, how many of you have struggled with the ability to delegate and the ability to trust other people to do the task that you think you can do better? It's a huge problem within, within entrepreneurs, leaders, people who are leading growth teams. I know myself, when I started my, my marketing firm, Millicent, that was the biggest problem that I had was entrusting people to do the things that I thought I could do better. But being emotionally intelligent, having the self-awareness to know that, hey, I can't do everything, and also understanding that, hey, Jimmy over here might be better at SEO than me. Rachel over there might be better at lifecycle marketing than I am. Being able to entrust people and having that emotional intelligence to have that self-awareness to know that you can't necessarily do everything and that you have to entrust others. Two is relationship management. This is huge for me. I love my team. We have a great relationship. Building great culture is extremely important. I've had the privilege of working with some great people like Morgan Brown that just walked in and having that great culture and being able to have people that you have great relationships with is extremely important and managing people is extremely important. And when I, when I say this, I mean not stopping people from working on the things that they're passionate about. Um, being able to fill out what are the wants and the needs of the people that work with you. Um, Sometimes we kind of look at people that we work with as people that just help us get to a goal, but these are people that have real feelings and emotions. And the one thing that I've learned is when you have high morale in your team, growth accelerates. So making sure that you manage people the right way, making sure that you give credit when credit is due, uh, is extremely important uh, leading your growth team. Contributing to your uh, emotional intelligence growth. Number one, step out of your comfort zone. I'll be completely honest, guys. I am an introvert at the end of the day. I hate being on stage. But I understand putting myself in these situations, meeting new people, stepping out of my comfort zone is essential to my growth as a person and the growth of my emotional intelligence. Two, embrace things and people who are different than you and travel your ass off, all right? Um, I come from Southside Richmond, uh, you know, from the hood. I work with Morgan, uh, who came from Connecticut, Sean Ellis, who was uh, a kid from Newport Beach, completely different people. Um, and I learned so much being around people that were completely different from me. And it's so easy for us to stay within our comfort zones continuously hang out with the same people that went to Stanford like us, uh, hang out with people that come from the same backgrounds as us. It's extremely important to embrace people and things that are different than you because when you're marketing products, you're not just marketing products to the same people that are like you. You're marketing to people that are completely different to, than you as well. Create genuine connections with the people you go to war with each day. Um, with my team, we all have a genu genuine rapport. Um, you don't have to like the people that you work with, but you have to respect the people that you work with and have genuine connections with the people that you work with. And the last, last thing, and I might offend some people with this, get out of the Silicon Valley bubble to be able to build and market products for the masses. One of the things that I see with a lot of startups in Silicon Valley is their inability to think outside of Silicon Valley about the people that may live in Oklahoma or Virginia that may be different than them or think about things differently than them. And so I encourage you to travel. I encourage you to step out of your comfort zone. I encourage you to just think different and make emotional intelligence 
a part of your marketing strategies. Thank you. Uh, I think we have some questions, or maybe not. Okay, here we go. How do you build scalable word of mouth? Uh, that's a good question. That's something that I'm tasked with right now, uh, leading marketing at Skirt. Uh, so one of the other big lessons that I've learned at Skirt is that um, a lot of the companies that I've worked with previously has been, ver uh, has been built on uh, digital marketing. And if you look at the history of companies like Uber and Lyft, uh, word of mouth was huge for them. And they did that by guerrilla style marketing and actually having people out on the streets. How many of you guys have been walking down downtown San Francisco and someone says, hey, try out Lyft? Or someone says, hey, try out Uber? Um, extremely important to build brand ambassador programs. It's extremely important to do event marketing, low cost event marketing. If someone tells you, hey, to sponsor this is $10,000 and we're gonna have 50 people, be like, no, turn that down. Make sure that you're getting good return on investment on event marketing. So those are the two things that I've been really focusing on, word of mouth, um, and then also influencer marketing, tapping into the people that uh, influence our target, uh, our target demo um, on social media has been very helpful as well. 95% um, uh, yeah. of purchasing, purchasing decisions online and offline are based on emotional impulses. Can you elaborate? What kind of impulses source? So I actually found this online. Uh, you, you, it may, may very well be wrong. I know for myself that before I make an, a, uh, a buying decision, emotions is always tend to be tied into it. Uh, oh, um, I'm hungry. That looks good. That looks delicious. I need to have that. Um, oh, I'm sad today. I want to buy some ice cream. Um, there tends to be emotional impulses uh, that goes into our buying behavior. Um, even if, oh, I saw Craig down the street buy a new big screen TV, I need a big screen TV too. So a lot of emotional impulses goes into our buying decisions. Can you share examples of emotional targeted messages that have performed well? How did you gather the data to decide what the message would be? Uh, emotional targeted messages. Um, so um, we actually just created a video that's converting very, very well on Facebook, and uh, it shows people being able to carry out their dreams and do the things that they need to do uh, with the access to affordable mobility. Uh, we've been using that on Facebook and Instagram, and basically it shows uh, three or four different people being able to accomplish their dreams or do the things that they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with the use of Skirt. Um, and so that's been performing very, very well for us um, in our advertising. Um, and so if you see it, check it out. Um, but it's been performing really well for us. Um, and how did you gather the data to decide what the message would be? Um, one of the biggest things was just talking to customers. It was a lot of qualitative data. Um, understanding what our customers were doing when they were using Skirt. What kind of um, uh, tasks did they need to do? What kind of trips they were taking? Uh, we, we surveyed a lot of people, talked to a lot of people, and got a lot of great insight on what people were using our service for. What is your best advice for choosing the right personal and professional mentor? Um, weirdly enough, I never really had a mentor coming up. Um, the closest thing I had to a mentor, I keep on speaking about him, is Morgan back there. We worked on Kuala and Growth Hackers together. Um, he's an awesome guy. Um, I unfortunately didn't have like a, a go-to mentor um, uh, coming up, but I think choosing someone that not only can you learn from, uh, but also that you can grow with as well um, is extremely important. And someone that you can also contribute something to. One of the things that I see all the time is, hey, Everett, can you help me with this? And Everett, can you help me with this? Or can you give me this advice? Um, but what you should always do when approaching a mentor is say, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Try to find mentors where you can contribute something to them as well. Uh, what are quick and easy ways to learn about your customers in a different market? Uh, so we just launched Skirt in Miami. 
And what we really did was just immerse ourselves within the community, the tech community um, in Miami, uh, the Latino community in Miami, all different parts, uh, whether it was in Brickell or South Beach or uh, downtown, every area is very, very different. So spending time and immersing yourself within the community, finding out their needs and their wants, you very quickly find out uh, things that you need to know by literally just taking the time to step out there and talk to people. Uh, we've learned a lot of things in Miami that helped us craft better marketing strategies by understanding that one part of the city had completely different needs than another part of the city. Um, let's see. Uh, what are, no. I have an idea about building my growth team based on each person owning a different target, target market across all channels, acquisition and retention. What do you think, good idea or crap idea? <laughs> huh. Um, honestly, I don't know the product, and that's, that's really hard to say. Um, but for me, I try to put people in the best position of what they're good at. Um, and I think it's very, very important to have T-shaped marketers um, that are good at a lot of different things and are expert in one really good thing and have them focus on that thing that they're really, really good at and then be able to bridge out from there. Um, so me personally, the person that's working on email and lifecycle marketing for uh, a target market, I would have them working on email and lifecycle marketing for all target markets. And so that's kind of how I would go about my marketing. SEO the same way, social media marketing content. I kind of like to look at things from a skill set than, than less so a target market, especially in an early stage company. Um, let's see. What are quick, nope, I already did that one. Tell us deep insights that you know about spurt customers, the skirt, <laughs> that allows you to better market to them. Oh, so a lot of it is just knowing what our ideal customer looks like um, when it comes to age, gender, um, uh, what parts of the city they live in. We understand we need to generate different types of demand in different parts of the city of LA and Orange County and San Diego and different cities that we are in. Um, I can't divulge a lot of information about skirt data, uh, but we definitely have deep insights about our users, um, about the things that make them tick, the different needs that they need, that they have in different areas of the city, and also what ages uh, really engages our product with customers. Um, I think that's all the time I have, is it? Am I good, or can I keep going? Um, am I good? One more, okay. Um, any tips on finding out who the NBCs, do we conduct surveys, interviews? Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of that qualitative data is extremely important. Uh, I used to work with a company called Qualaroo, which did exactly just that. Um, getting that qualitative data from surveys on the website. Uh, we have NPS scores. Um, so every time that someone uses Skirt, uh, they do an NPS survey to figure out what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. And then we allow them to give us feedback. And then constantly, I'm engaging people on social media. I'm there right in the room with customer support hearing issues, things that are happening consistently. So I know the things that are going wrong. I know the things that uh, people need and want. Um, and I also know uh, what is our target customer due to the data that we do have. So I think that's it. All right, thank you guys, appreciate it. <laughs>